Today, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. We continue to dig for the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. But through sons of God, that you also may partake in his power and in the knowledge of all secrets. What is the secret for me today? The Great Reset versus the New World Order. Restorative Justice number 36. As the body of Christ keeps on changing with history, they do not let continue in the chaotic environment of 2020. You see, my concern is the aspect of people that keep on prophesying that Trump is going to be the new president. He is going to be re-elected. And I can say what I personally think, but that is not important. What is important is, what does the Lord say? We have the body of Christ, which is a bunch of believers. And when I say a bunch, I say that respectful. There are millions of people that claim that they live their life based on a Christian foundation. According to statistics, there are about 203 million Americans out of the 320 million that claim an affinity with Christianity. Now, let's check this out. One of the exciting things that I experience personally is when I read the Bible and it states that there is a reset, there is a new world order coming. But if I read it from the Bible's perspective, the new world order was started actually at the time of Jesuah HaMashiach, or many know, them, know him as Jesus. When he arrived, a major change occurred. But the majority of people are only looking at it from a perspective of how much money they have in the pocket or in the bank account. And so the Great Reset is a new structure that Mr. Swap from some kind of a major banking institution is proposing. Technically, it is all the same. There is a group of people that wants to take over the world and control the world by money, with money, and for the sake of money, because then they are in charge. Now, doesn't that sound funny that in the paradise, when we started in paradise, there was a similar situation where somebody was disgruntled, in this case, Beelzebub. He was, uh, is also known by the name of Lucifer, or some of them know him as Satan. Well, knowing the different names of Satan is not exactly going to help you, but at least the system is all the same, because he was disgruntled and he wanted control. He wanted people to worship him. And so, therefore, we see the setup that Adam and Eve are basically disconnected from the presence of God. See, the majority of people that believe that Adam and Eve were in paradise and therefore they were no longer with God, don't realize that the perfection of Adam and Eve was taking place as Adam was the apprentice with God. And when Satan got involved, and got them sidetracked. The moment they sided with Satan, Beelzebub, God had to protect the people. And for their own protection, he had to disconnect his relationship. And that is why we talk about restorative justice, because restorative justice means when God speaks, his word is law. And God created men, Adam and Eve, and they had a body. They had a mind. They could mentally could communicate with each other. And they were also spiritually designed so that they could live forever. But if they were not complete, how could they live forever? And God had immediately a plan for that. And the plan was fulfilled. First, Adam and Eve failed. Then the second time, he gave the law to Moses for the children of light. And the children of light did not fulfill their position, what they needed to do. And so Moses could not complete the mission. So therefore, 
the next person that was able to do it to fulfill the law the light the law of the for the children of light we know it as the ten commandments but we understand now that Yeshua was the one that completed finally the restorative justice so 2000 years later or actually 1500 years later we have a fellow by the name of Martin Luther 1517 he was extremely concerned about the position of the church because the church held on to all the power but where did that power come from it came because of an amalgamation and an empowerment from the roman emperor constantine he was a worshipper of the sun s-u-n and therefore because he prayed to the sun he was a pagan and he sacrificed all kinds of uh, stuff to all kinds of different gods and he wanted peace and he recognized the thing in the followers of Yeshua HaMashiach when they followed the way the truth and the light those people were peaceful he wanted to have the peace but with all the sacrifices they continued to do to all the false gods and this is where the problem is be true sons of God that you also might partake in his power and in the knowledge of all secrets see Satan didn't understand that he didn't get the whole picture he thought power is money and I've got the power to decide who lives and who dies but that is not the case the power of serving an almighty God where we are his children where we become a family that is what it is all about isn't that awesome now that you start to get a different side of the coin and god is the god of the living and satan that of the dead what about the body of christ so if we have now a body of christ they were in the beginning considered the followers of the narrow path the truth the way the truth and the light so christians appear to be very funny people they changed somewhere around 325 but nobody actually wants to talk about it i know that some people do jehovah witnesses there are other people like the mormons there are people the seven days adventists there are other people that are aware like the muslim people are aware that there are a lot of things that do not match up with reality and god therefore said something special he said if god is the god of the living satan is that of the dead and yet the body of christ has in their mind that they need a man like trump in the position of leadership they believe one thing and then immediately decide to be certain of a different thing i've never understood that they claim the bible's help because diverse stories and teachings can back them up on their viewpoint of that moment however trump for much of his political run the thrice married swindling profane materialistic self-style playboy appealed mainly to the more french elements of christianity weird a ragtag group of prosperity gospelers like his spiritual advisor paula white a televangelist who promises her donors their own angel christian dominions who believe that america's law should be founded explicitly on biblical ones including stoning people that are transgenders or people that are in the old days they call them homosexuals yet trump is their leader and they keep on supporting him no matter what and currently i've been watching a couple of their videos about the return of president trump i compare it to what jesus said lest you become the slaves of satan uh oh if you continue to push for Trump, I can tell you, you continue to push to become a slave of Satan. 
is that you suffer, and this was a statement from Jesus, for Satan and his diseases torment your bodies. We have seen a tremendous pandemic, and nobody wants to talk about it because it is something that you don't talk about because it is such a hard topic. Doctors and nurses are doing their utmost best to help to heal the people, and yet they fall victim themselves. Several of the doctors have died. I don't have the numbers, I haven't seen them, but I know many doctors and nurses and good people that take care of them, they die in the process. And I recommend those people, they are admirable, they are incredible to put their life on the line. But why is Christianity promoting a Trump president? There is something weird going on. Have they become slaves of Satan in the political pandemic that we have? It is a political pandemic and a political turmoil. We're all turning out to our screens for information. It looks like this is the Internet's day. So here we go. Even the Pope. This is December 21, 2019. I hear statements that the Pope is no longer alive. I don't know. But the Pope claims in 2019 that the Christendom is, does no longer exist and it needs to revamp the Curia. That means the Vatican City has to be reformed because it is no longer actually truly a part of Christendom. But the Christendom that we got to know has never really become a part of following the Lord. Because when Jeshua was around, when he started, he asked, you follow the way, the truth and the light. When we follow the instructions of God, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. The initial Ten Commandments were for the children of light. And they could not even stand to sign them and ratify it. So they became the Ten Commandments. But we, when we open our eyes, and when we listen careful, be true sons of God. Yes, folk, I was a prodigal son. I was born in a Christian family. I was raised a Christian. My mom died very early and I spent seven years in a Christian orphanage. Then my father remarried and I didn't fit in the family scale. So I got basically kicked out quickly and shortly thereafter living on the street. I still had a chance to complete my studies. And as I continued in religion, I was active as an evangelist, 12 years in prison, maximum security, helping, talking, working with people. And eventually I traveled all over the world, having a chance to talk. We settled down in Canada and there we were active. But then I had also a confrontation. Being a true son of God doesn't mean that you have no problems, but you learn to overcome them because peace be with you. See, when God is with you, no matter what happens, there is a peace, a peace that passes, surpasses all understanding. And therefore, to love your heavenly father. If you love your heavenly father, you understand that the spirit of God is there. Mother Earth, as it sounds weird, but we were created from Earth and the spoken word of God that together made us and created us. And so the sacrifices that the Lord made for us, and now we are feeding Satan? And how do we feed Satan? Each time that we do what Satan says, each time when we step on the Ten Commandments, each time that we do not live according to God's direction. Folks, the Ten Commandments were just only a meager way to let you understand. If you do not follow this, you pay, you get indebted to Satan. People that screw around, let's put it very blunt. They don't care, they swear, they do whatever. Each time you open your mouth, you are indebted to Satan. Each time that you go wrong or you go sour or whatever you want to call it, you are married and you go with another woman. Each time you do that, you cause yourself to get indebted to Satan and Satan will always want to be paid. Jesu gave examples of the prodigal son 
that after a long time he came finally to his senses and the father was waiting for him but his debt had to be settled and folks the pandemic is one of the resources of satan to show his power because we owe satan in debt and when we return to the father and repent as the prodigal son we now have an opportunity to overcome this not because we are so strong but because of the power of our father he loves us he cares for you i make it quick if you want to get to know the father you got to make up your mind you got to make up your mind are you fed up with the situation you're in it's not just praise the lord i'm a christian now no it is following the way the truth and the light and god will teach you how what and where now remember tough times never last but tough people they do bye for now
Thank you. 